Hey there, this is your pal Pally, and welcome back to Gitter Raid. Time for a big dino to chase you down, heroically. This is Thok Heroic in Siege of Ogamar, and again, it's 25 man, although much of the strategy is the same for 10 man. This fight requires 2 tanks and 5 to 6 healers on 25 man. It can likely be 2 or 3 healed on 10 man. Mechanic changes for Heroic. Very, very little to be honest. The big deal is the increased damage by everything in the encounter, and the increased speed that Thok has during his Blood Frenzy phase. The damage is so great during the normal phase that you'll have to adapt a different approach to the phase. In the normal mode version of this encounter, you can simply stack up, heal hard, and go as far as your healers can push it. In Heroic, it's more about trying to get back up before the next pulse of raid damage. This time, let's hop right into the strategy per phase. First off, because of the damage, you'll have to split the raid group so that you don't push the Blood Frenzy phase prematurely. On 25 man, he will push phases if you have 15 or more people bloodied and stacked within 10 yards. So put 12 or so in each group to cover tanks having to dip in and out. On 10 man, 5 is the magic number, so split up 3 or 4 each group and make sure the tanks know where to go to avoid pushing the phase. At this point, it's all about how many stacks of acceleration you want to push. That's all dependent on your healing and rotation of cooldowns. We went close to 30 here, and then stacked up to push the phase. Obviously, the longer you can hold out, the better for your DPS, although not all of your DPS will be performing well in this constant interruption palooza. Now comes the fun part. Thok accelerates a lot quicker in this Blood Frenzy phase than on normal mode. You should try to carefully plan out your kiting route. Here's an example pattern. First kiter would go over here by the ice guy's cage. Second one would go back towards the fire guy's cage. Next one comes over here close to the poison guy's cage. And then after that, you take the warlock portal all the way to the entrance. Lastly, the dino will run from there all the way to the back of the room. And hopefully you'll have unlocked a cage and let a prisoner out. Otherwise, it becomes a feeding blood frenzy. See what I did there? Yeah, never mind. As far as prisoners, we chose to let the poison guys out first, as is done with many strategies. You'll have to deal with it at some point, and it feels easier to do it early on. Healers spam the heck out of your dispels during this entire phase. If you get behind, it's a bad deal. Mass dispels from priests help, but it should all be manageable by the number of healers you will likely bring. This phase is just like the first part, stack on your groups, DPS hard, heal hard. Except, there's a little bit of extra fun depending on the prisoner that you freed. If you free the poison guys, you also get a flurry of bats that come down just like the trash that is previous to this boss. They do AoE damage and a lot of self-healing. You'll have to seriously focus stunning them and beating them down, or else they'll be there forever. One of your tanks will need to pick them up and place them in the melee stack group to be cleaved down. If you open the Ice Guys prison, you'll get that fun Yeti from the trash as well. The Yeti will run through your raid and seriously harm people. It's probably close to a one-shot, so have people watching for the direction of the Yeti and call it out. Depending on your DPS and strat, you likely don't have to kill off the Yeti, but beware of him. So, what else? Well, we were just in the poison phase, and now you kite as normal in the next blood frenzy. Be careful to stick close to healers for dispels. During this phase, you free the ice guys. This probably means you want to relocate to the positions that are closer to that. Those are these other raid markers here. Again, split your groups up and push it as long as you can. During this phase, you'll also have to be wary of tanks getting frozen. It's a bad deal for them, because they likely won't have the ability to do any active mitigation. Rain should switch immediately to break them, or anyone else out. For the last Blood Frenzy here, we kited in the opposite direction, but same type of deal as to where we took the dino. First to the Poison Guy cage, then the Empty cage, over to the other side, and whatnot. Once again, watch out for the Yeti and get through this phase. DPS-wise, we just pushed to kill this boss in this phase. 
If you are at all close, you might want to take the same approach. The boss will heal for a crap ton every time he eats a prisoner. And fire phase isn't a cakewalk ever, so try to get it done here. And now you get a dino on the ground. Good job. Tanks, you'll tank swap as usual and pick up bats. Healers, coordinate healing CDs to last through the massive damage and regen and rest a little bit while blood frenzy is going on. Don't forget to dispel. DPS, pew pew hard and kite the dino so you don't get chomped. Here are DPS and healing meters for this kill for comparison's sake. Thanks for watching and please comment, like, and or subscribe to the video if you found it helpful and have a good one.